What's the story everyone? Welcome back to GA Fan TV. I hope you're all keeping wonderfully well. My name is Aaron and I hope you're keeping well on this Saturday morning and today I spoke with Galway and Corofin senior footballer Martin Farragher. We had a very long chat indeed. We look back of course at Martin's time playing for Corofin in particular. He's had quite the club career without doubt Martin Farragher. He's won uh, four All-Ireland club titles, five Connacht senior club titles as well as seven Galway senior club championships along the way. We spoke in depth really about his time playing for Corofin looking at that great Corofin side what it took in getting them over the line in a lot of those finals how they always had the will to come back and win the All-Ireland year on year three in a row of course as well a historic three in a row he won in 2020 of course we did touch on that most recent defeat of course as well in 2020 as well when they were beaten of course by Mount Bellew Moy Lock we also spoke briefly about Martin's time playing for Galway as well and of course some of the hopes for the future as well of course with the fact there will be a split window hopefully moving forward for club and county which would mean more opportunities for players like Martin Farragher to get more involved with the Galway senior football team so I very much enjoyed this chat with Martin Farragher very in-depth long conversation about Corfin's success over the past 10 years or so so if you are a Galway fan or anything like that I would highly recommend watching this in full because you'll definitely very much enjoy it and without further ado leave a like subscribe if you haven't already and let's get straight into it Okay, so I'm here now with uh, Corofin and Galway senior footballer Martin Farragher. Um, I suppose, first of all, I appreciate you jumping on, Martin. It would be good to, uh, I suppose, look back at your time playing for, for Corofin and, and Galway, of course, as well. Um, I suppose, first of all, how's, uh, how's life with yourself? Yeah, not too bad, no. Um, strange times at the moment, just trying to adapt to it as best I can. Um, at least this, this lockdown, I'm kind of working from home, so five days a week and, and previously I was kind of cut back to two or three days a week so I had a bit of extra time in my hands back then so yeah um, just trying to keep fit now at the moment I suppose over the in January I was took a bit of a break and then February is kind of getting back up to speed and March now kind of getting back into the thick of it um, but yeah it's, it can be difficult at times to stay motivated but have to look at the goal at the end of the day and, and keep keep going towards it mm. and I suppose obviously as well like we've seen um, with the, the GA obviously not continuing during the level 5 lockdown like I've kind of just been asking anyone I had on really over the, the past couple of weeks like what what have you kind of made of that news yourself um, the what's that now so with the fact obviously with the with the GA obviously last year when they were in a, a level 5 lockdown they obviously they still kept playing like obviously with this year you know, that's not going to be the case. So there's going to be no um, inter-county football or no club football or anything like that until, you know, we're out of a level five lockdown. So, like, what did you make of that kind of news yourself? Yeah, it's strange. Um, I suppose we noticed over the last lockdown how, how important the GA was for even a social aspect of just talking to people and how much it means to people. Um, and it's strange that there's, there's nothing really to follow at the moment. I suppose a few people looking at soccer and and following that. But yeah, it's a, like the GA is a huge part of the community um, in Ireland. So it's a big hit on that. And even for the the lads as well, like I know they're mad to get back at it. Like, and, you know, for myself, with Cara Finn, where we're kind of, where we're going, going all the time. Like, and it's weird being not training for a while or not playing matches and um, so just kind of just kind of adapting to it yeah mm. and I suppose like obviously at the moment there's kind of talks over whether the, the club should come back first or whether they should stick with county like I imagine for yourself anyway like it's you know if we were to come back with county first it'll probably be over a year nearly since since you've played with Corofin so would there be an appetite maybe for, for from yourself to kind of bring the clubs back first and then the county or would you be happy enough to kind of keep it the way it is for, for 2021? Yeah, it's it's fine the way it is. I think um, it's it's good to see that they're looking towards getting split seasons and I suppose the club season being finished up before before Christmas. Um, in terms of in ter terms of county, I'm not in a goal at the moment. So, um, I suppose in the aspect of being able to show yourself for for the next year, you would nearly rather the club being played first, so you can show what you can do and maybe get in and get a chance for goal. And um, from that perspective. Um, yeah, it's it's the way it's fallen. Um, I think we'd be all happy just to see games played at this stage now. And, 
and a bit of atmosphere around the place. Um, so yeah, looking looking forward to seeing the games get back. I'm not sure when it's going to happen, but we'll see. Mm. Yeah, I suppose that's the most important thing, isn't it? Really, just once we once we see the games back and once everything's safe and it's safe to do so, and we can whether it is club or, or county or, or whatever, I think we all just kind of want to see you know some sort of football resume. I suppose looking at obviously your your time playing with Corofin, like obviously um, certainly not a bad uh, club career for, for for many players anyway. Like four All Ireland club titles in there, five Connacht titles, seven Galway titles. I mean, I suppose not a bad playing career from a from a club point of view, anyways. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, I was only down the pitch the last day and I was kind of tying the boots in the car before going out and doing my own session and I was looking up at the sign and it was like curve in three in a row and it just kind of brought me back to just thinking about the 98 when when we won a first in curve in and how much of a big, big deal it was back then and like it's it was the first All-Ireland that was won in, in Connacht at the time and they were the standard bears at the time and, and just to think that I've been part of a team that's gone on to win three in a row. It's just, it's crazy, really. And you kind of forget about it sometimes. Like I remember um, Ryan Giggs had a quote before saying, like, he'll, he'll think back on what he's achieved after his career is finished. Like, that's the way it is at the moment. It's just about kind of keep going and, and keep keep trying to do as best we can and keep achieving what we can with the, with the time we have playing. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I suppose like when you're in the middle of it, I suppose, you know, and you're kind of like what you were saying earlier, like when you have one game, you know, every week and you're kind of stuck in the middle of it, I suppose it's hard to kind of think too much or kind of think too much back because you don't want to kind of lose your focus on the next game or or what's coming up next. But like who, who in your opinion, would have been kind of like your biggest kind of inspiration or, or player kind of who would you have looked up to, I suppose, when you were kind of, you know, growing up um, in Galway and, and playing with Corofin? Um, I suppose looking up, I, like when we we're growing up, it would have been the likes of Gary Sices and Kieran Fisher. Is like Kieran Fisher has an all star about twenty years ago. Like, and he's he just retired there last year, and it wasn't it wasn't like he leads by example on the pitch and off the pitch as well. So he was he was setting the standard in every way. And then you have the likes of Gary Sice, who who was a county player for years, like and a top top quality player, and he was off the pitch like these lads they're not just doing it on the pitch the, the reason they can do it on the pitch is because they're doing it off the pitch as well and they're putting the work in and um, <clears throat> like I've seen something like Gary he didn't take his first free until he was like 27 now, and he's like winning matches and big moments for us throughout the last three or four years Um, which yeah, them two would, would have been the main ones I suppose the main player that I, I like following was the Gooch he's my favourite player of all time he just he was unbelievable in his prime and I kind of try to play somewhat like him at times and try and get in his head and, and get a feeling for how he played and the big moments and the pressure moments. And I was unbelievable. And it was great to play against him and against Crokes and, and meet him and, and after the game and kind of chat to him and pick his brains. But yeah, they're the main lads. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the Goose definitely one of the, the best players to ever do it without doubt. Like, and I suppose, like, what was it like then when you kind of came into the the Corofin team yourself, you know, when you were playing underage and then I suppose maybe when you made the step up then to, to senior level, like, what was that um that whole experience like? Yeah, so so underage, we kind of, my, my age group had a habit of of losing all the finals on the way up. we get to a final and then get hammered by the likes of Salt Hill and Barron at the time. And then we got to minor, minor final and we bet Salt Hill in the final. It was a huge, huge thing for us growing up. And I think from that team, I think four of us have gone on to, to play with the Curfin seniors, me, Liam Silk, Conor Cunningham and Jason Leonard. Um, and then we had the likes of Dylan Wall and Colin Brady and these other lads kind of, they were involved in that team as well. Um, but yeah, um, a big thing that I noticed from Curfin and, and let's say Sawtill back then is that we, we held on to a lot of players from the age of 18 to 21. Um, which I think is a huge age for lads because you can get caught up in different things, especially in, let's say, a city, and you can, you can pull to different sports even. Um, in Curfin, we only have one thing, and that's that's football. And I think that was to our advantage because um, we, especially with our success now, we're kind of we're always pulling in one or two lads um, to be involved and, and push us, keep us going as well. Um, and I suppose looking back then, went on to 
I came into the Cardiff Film panel and it took me it took me a year to kind of to get up to speed. Um, Stephen Rochford was over us at the time, and uh, he was hu- he was huge in Cardiff and he was he brought a, a different aspect to the game. Um, but the first year I was I couldn't I wasn't even making the panel, and then uh, I was brought into the the Gold Twenty One team, and I was kind of that gave me. Uh, a lot of positives, I suppose. I was doing a lot of gymming with them and conditioning, and it kind of helped me in that sense. And I was, I was doing well, and I felt like I was, I was pushing to get a start in the team. And then when I came to the, the first round, um, I didn't get on the panel even, and it was a bit of a, a punch in the gut. But um, it was against Leitrim in the first round, and we actually ended up losing that, that match against Leitrim. And the year before, they had won All Ireland, so it was a big big shock um but then two year two days later I was went to play a league game against Santa Down with Curfin seniors and um I think I went I think I scored two points that day and from from that day I I kept my place in the team and that was here we went on to the win the 2015 All Ireland so um that was crazy I went from not staring for not even on the panel to, to go on to win All Ireland and the first All Ireland in 17 years for the club so was huge and from there just kind of went from strength from strength to strength yeah mm-hmm. yeah i suppose definitely definitely quite a big jump i suppose in the in the space of a year like without doubt and like and i suppose as well like obviously you know when you when you did win that first uh county title in, tw- in 2013 like you were first obviously um like do you think as well kind of winning a, a minor title as well kind of coming through as well that kind of helped breaking the duck like what you're saying there when you're kind of losing a few different finals and whatnot that kind of maybe alleviated the pressure a bit kind of going into going into playing at senior level at that stage yeah definitely it was definitely a confidence booster I remember being at the end of that game against Otto in the minor final and, and looking at Jason Leonard and the two of us kind of nodding our heads because we got we got hammered all the way up like and we finally got this win and I suppose you get brought into a, a panel then that like Curfin back then they were still winning counties and Connacht's like there was still a a savage team like and uh, there was a, still a standard there to be met and so it was just about getting up to that standard and it took it took me a year it takes some lads years to kind of get up to that in, in terms of physicality even and I think the first year as a curve in I was around 72 kg I was very light and for me personally as an inside forward I took it I think it took me it didn't take me as long to adapt to the game because um, like you have the passes out the pitch the half forward line that year was like Gary Jelani and Mike Fair and Gary Sice like, and they were the best they were unbelievable passers like and I suppose you wouldn't have had that quality at minor level but as inside forward you're relying on the lads out the pitch a lot and in that sense they helped me a lot um, transfer transfer between minor and senior mm. and I suppose as well like obviously you know like obviously winning seven um, you know, county county titles in a row. Like, what was it? Do you think for yourselves, kind of year on year, that always kind of had you back motivated, back on at it year on year? Because obviously, it is quite demanding and it is quite a strain on yourselves as a group in many ways. So, I suppose, like, what was it for yourselves that kind of had you back at it year on year and being able to, I suppose, still achieve that same success? I suppose it's the the winning mentality. Like, um, a lot of it comes down to the trainings as well. Um, like especially back in that 2015 year, like the the A versus B games were nearly as tough as as matches themselves. Like so, you go into matches and they're nearly like a breeze compared to that. And so it's just the it's the lads pushing. I think in Carfin, like the the intermediate strain with the seniors, and you, you have good A versus B games and just the week out before matches or whatever. And yeah, it's the lads in the squad pushing you the whole time. It's a huge help. And I suppose like when you were starting to get to like the latter stages of, you know, provincial or the All Ireland series, like obviously a lot of, you know, intense battles in there with the likes of Ballon Tubber, Vincent, Slot Neil. Like like how, how did you cope in, in some of those games and what was it like coming up against some of those teams when you did start, you know, competing at the latter stages of Connacht and getting to All Ireland semi finals and finals and whatnot? Yeah, I suppose I suppose the the goal of the of um when we're starting out the year is is to get over Galway first. So we'd have a number of games in Galway, it could be seven or eight, like, and if we get over them and you get onto the Connacht series, it's going to be four games, five if you have to go to London and you just can fully concentrate on them games then. Um, 
yeah, we had some some great battles over there with the likes of Castle Bear and um, St. Bridget's. Um, I think we went to went to extra time a few times with them and just scraped over the line. And then you have the likes of Slot Neil, like they were always always pushing an Ulster. Um, and then I suppose the, last, the three in a row, then you're looking at Crokes and Nemo, like two top quality teams. Like I know we got bet by Crokes previously, like so it was, it was nice to, I suppose, get back at them um, in 2019. Um, they played us off the park that day. Um, and then Nemo, then they have such a, it was great to play against a team that has such a great history, like, and some some great players. Um, and then Kiku was probably one of our toughest because it was a it was a mixture of they were playing defensive, but we knew they were going to play defensive, and we didn't really turn up um, for the first half. I'd say it took us a while to settle into the game, and we were a bit lethargic, like, and I suppose it took us really till till extra time to kind of get a bit of life in us and. Um, from there, yeah, we happened to grind out the win. But yeah, mm. we have some some tough battles over the years. It hasn't been a, a smooth sailing at all. You might people like to say like you see you see some Crow Park in, in two finals over the, the last few years, but they haven't seen the slogan in the Connacht and in Galway over the years. Like in, in Galway we had two county finals against Mount Bellew and and June now into a replay. Um so it's been it's been a tough journey, but it's been a good journey. Mm. Yeah, and I suppose that was kind of that kind of leads me on to what I was going to say next was obviously like I suppose the attitude as well and some of those close games like what you're saying against Tune when it looked like you were all but beaten and I suppose you know having to go to extra time against Croaks and extra time against Kilku like what kind of is it within yourselves to kind of like how how do you kind of find that extra yard or that extra step maybe in those battles or in those games because I feel like with a lot of teams maybe in those kind of situations they probably you know say to themselves maybe subconsciously like okay we've we've achieved our all Ireland the previous year we've done what we could this isn't our year we kind of just have to let this one slide so what is it for for yourselves as a group that kind of in your opinion kind of drives you on to, to get back in those games yeah I think it's the, the character of the lads you have the leaders like Gary Sice uh, Ronald Steed for these lads who can step up in the big moments like Gary scored two two points to get us the, the draw against June um, then you had the likes of Lundy, Neil Lundy, who scored a fist over the bar in the last the last second against Mount Bellew. Um, also, we have we have a lot of experience under our belt as well, so we know that we're always like if we're in touch and distance, we can get there. Like you know, we have we had the talent in our in our squad, um, even the subs coming off the bench to to push us and and to get us over the line um, against Mount Bellew last year. Um, we probably we probably didn't have that, um, we were probably we got injuries at bad times. Um, I think in the, in the second water break, we had we're down by about six points, and we had two injuries like Mike Mike Fair and Ronald Steed, and we had a there was another back that was injured as well. And we were just looking around, and you know if it was in touch and distance, you'd be like, okay, here we go. Like, but it's hard to come back from from that from that distance then. Um, but yeah, I think it's experience over the years that helped us. And I suppose when you when you get one grind out one win, um, you don't see why you can't grind out another. Um, and just keep keep going from there. And you never bet like you keep you keep going. And experience helps us. And I think a lot of teams, the way they look at it as well is like, oh, we're we're just about to be curve in. Like, and I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves even. So that gives us an advantage to kind of scrape back a few points and and uh, put pressure on them. Yeah, it's probably the psychology kind of in a you know in, in amongst that I suppose as well. Like and I suppose when you look at the the fourteen fifteen season as well, like when obviously when you like what you're kind of alluding to earlier, like winning the clubs, um, like second ever All Ireland club senior football championship. Like what was that experience like? I suppose on the day, um, you know, and obviously you know le- leading up to it as well, like beating Ballant Hubber, Vincent's Slot Neil, like all you know, all on route of course. So I suppose what was that? whole uh, experience like leading up to it and on the day as well yeah I think I think the biggest win that year was against St. Vincent's um, that was the most important win because Curfin for years had get, were getting to All-Ireland semi-finals but they couldn't get over that hurdle and get to Crow Park and I think it was for the supporters as well like they'd only love a day out in Crow Park and I think it was four or five semi-finals in a row that was lost and to get over that hurdle against such a like St. Vincent's won the year before 
um, and they looked unstoppable at the time. I think they were going for, was it two in a row or going for the second one, yeah. Um, so it was nice to to get a win there, even for myself, like as a, as a young lad, playing against the likes of Jeremy Connolly, like and, and these lads, Mossy Quinn, and you're like, this is crazy. I remember one stage in that game, like, Jeremy Connolly was running at me, like, and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do here because I was only about 72 kg at the time, and he happened to slip, and I was delighted. But yeah, um, we got on to Crow Park then, and um, Slot Neil, I think. I think that year we were just we were just at the races like we we had our work done and we were prepped and that was was just just one of them years where you kind of had everything going for you and we had like say Alan Burke and Gray Higgins these lads who played for Gaul were like um playing that time and a lot of there was there was experience under our belt back then even though the likes of me and maybe Liam Silk were were young and as well at the time. But we had like Gary Delaney as well. It's like that's three or four older lads who played for years that that were kind of pushing us on and, and getting us going. But for me, that for your first year playing club to win All Ireland, it was crazy. I was kind of slagging at the time. I was like, I can retire now, happy. Um, but I suppose since then, it's it's not really about what you have at the end. It's not about the what you win at the end of the day. It's about the journey and um like the three in a row journey is like that only happens because you keep winning like and it's it's all about the journey at the end of the day so especially with the lads and and the crack as well so yeah and i suppose as well then looking at the the 2018 final like do you think as well kind of some of the the near misses maybe in 16 and 17 and i suppose maybe then having tasted that success in 2015 and then missed out in 16 and 17 like that kind of maybe drove you on in 2018 to to land another one and I suppose that was kind of maybe like the catalyst for the the three in a row yeah probably um a big part of that year was the semi-final um I got sent off in the first 10 seconds that game and the lads went on to win that game which is incredible like you're playing an all-Ireland semi-final with 14 men and the still started they were able to grind out a win like and I can't thank them enough for that like and Sure, when we got to Crow Park, then we had nothing, to, nothing to lose. Like, and we just kind of went for it, and yeah, just, just one of them days where everything clicked. Like, and it was a really enjoyable day. Hmm. Yeah, because I suppose I, I spoke with Luke Connolly there um, a couple of weeks ago. I had him on the podcast there a while ago, and he was kind of saying, kind of coming into that game, that he watched you in the in the semi final, and you know maybe that they were probably a little bit maybe arrogant or kind of a little bit overconfident kind of coming into that. Did you feel that maybe you kind of caught them a bit by surprise, and maybe the fact that you were coming in maybe as slight underdogs in some ways? Like I think a lot of people fancied Nemo considering the form that they were in, the way I think they beat Slot Neil quite comfortably in the in the semi finals as well. So. Was there a real kind of expectation amongst yourselves that you could maybe catch them cold and and I suppose do what you did and you know score two six to one I think in the opening 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, um, I suppose people didn't really see much from the semi final because of that. Like when, once we went down to fourteen men, our whole game plan changed and you know we didn't really know what to do straight away. Like and we we're kind of adapting to the game I was as it was coming. Like and I think the lads even even gone under that under the pressure of that game and um, drove them on for the for the All-Ireland like and kind of we got to Crow Park then and we were fami- a lot of us were familiar with Crow Park before I'm not sure if the Nemo lads were and I suppose that's where our exper- experience comes in again like and you're, you're talking about the first 10 minutes that that could definitely come down to the experience at the end of the day and we just pushed on from there and I suppose, like, what, what kind of players do you think it was? I mean, I know you're kind of touching on Gary Sice and a few others. Like, what kind of players do you think kind of stood out maybe in that kind of season to, to get you over the line? Um, I um, I think that was... I'm I'm not sure the years now. It's all kind of a different... bit of a blur, but... Um, the likes of, I think Liam Silk had a great year that year. Like, he was he was bombing forward. I, I know Luke was... He did, he did an article before at Joe Daddy about... He couldn't understand Liam going up and down the pitch like, and that's just Liam like he's just an engine on him like, and there's no no wonder he's one of the best and consistent backs for goal over the years like, and he can be a nightmare to mark. And if you're if you're looking at Luke having a problem with him like, Luke is one of the best players like, and that's that's automatically a, a change in that sense, and and that's a, a positive for us. 
Um, so that gives us an, an up in that sense. But um, yeah, you have the likes of the midfielders and you have you have Ronan and Dahi, like they've been there for since 2015. They know each other inside out and Dahi and they all they both of them have their different strengths, like I suppose Steedo will be a, a playmaker in, in a sense and Dahi will be the lad up and down the pitch. And yeah, um who was it there? Ian as well, me and Ian inside. Um, sure when you have uh, the likes of Ian Burke inside which uh, it's it's always enjoyable to play with like because we've been playing together since we were 12 and 13 like and you know we know we know each other's game inside out um, it's the same with with Jason Jason Leonard and, and Liam and the likes of them lads and I suppose as they're kind of going on as well like, like we've been we've done three in a row now but a positive from that is that we've we've been consistently playing games like so we know each other's games inside out. I know when Gary Sice gets the ball, what he's thinking, or he knows what I'm thinking, and we kind of have that connection. Um, it's the same with Mike and the same with Jason and, and Ron Siege, and you know the likes of some players that, that aren't able to play a pass that you might want, and you might hold your own. And you know it's a, that's nearly the most important thing as an inside forward to understand and and time. Um, it's everything as an inside forward for me, you know. And and how influential do you think Kevin O'Brien was as the manager as well? Like obviously when he came in, as well, like huge success. Like what was it like as was playing under him, and how influential has he been in your time playing for for Corfin? Yeah, he's been huge. He was he was there the like when uh, when Stephen Rochford was there. Um, he was the coach, so he's been around throughout the whole thing. Um, since since Roch left that time, a lot of the same kind of training plans and and tactics were were brought in and, and drills and we kind of we've kind of kept them for for a long time um and we've kind of just adapted and, and changed them up a bit to keep them fresh um and that's that's so important over the over the it's been about five or six years now since since Roch was there and it's important to to innovate and adapt um for in order to keep competing and keep keep at the top as we were um, we've kind of slipped up with that at the moment. Um, we just need to, to get on track at the moment. And I suppose the the selectors and, and Kevin over the lockdown and quarantine have been great. Like they've been consistently on to us, like and making sure we're doing the right things and eating the right foods and, and things like that. So it's nice to have, and they deserve huge credit. Like um, we wouldn't have been here without them. Absolutely, yeah. Like I think definitely, you know, the job they've done since they've come in has definitely been tremendous, I suppose, along with yourselves as well. Like in I suppose winning that three in a row then against Kill um after extra time, like like we were saying earlier, very tough game, very physical game in many ways. I suppose like what was the atmosphere like after, you know, in the dressing room and with the supporters as well, I suppose, when you became the the first club to ever win three in a row at, at senior level in Gaelic football anyway in club championship, like what was that um experience like? I suppose that the feeling in the dressing room after was just relief. Um, we all knew it was it was we were going for three in a row. We might not have said it before, but it was kind of all in our heads. And you you might try and just play it as another game. I think the Dubs struggled a bit with that against Kerry last year, and the, they were going for their six in a row, and that went for a replay as well. They weren't they weren't up for it on the first day, and I think we were feeling a bit of that. Um, but when I got over, it was it was relief and. It was. It's just an unreal achievement. Um, there's no other way to describe it. It kind of feels like it didn't happen in a way, um, because it's just. It was just the norm. Like it was just we were getting to these places all the time, and and we're continuing to to go from there and grow. And I suppose it comes from just the atmosphere and trainings and things like that. Like we have a certain standard that we have in Curfin that we kind of everyone has to adhere, adhere to. Um, not really from a management point of view sometimes, but it's really player driven. Like, uh, like we're always pushing to the we, if someone's not carrying their, their weight or they're not on some training, they'll hear about it or, you know, they'll be encouraged to, to do better and, and go from there. Yeah. So it's the trainings really, that's where things are made. Um, that's where you see them performances. And I suppose that's a lot of that's down to the, the drills that the, the management give us. It's, it's, based around our game plan and the way we play when we're like to move move the ball and um 
you know, kick it and there'd be a lot of kicking in her in her trainings and quick hands and you know the basics of the game. Um it can it just adds to adds to what we're doing and and helps us achieve what we want to achieve. And I suppose like you were kind of alluding to it there a bit as well. Like obviously, like when you're training with Corof and like would in many ways would they almost be ran almost like the same as kind of like an inter county setup, like kind of similar to, to Galway and that kind of that kind of fashion. Yeah, it wouldn't be fair off it. Um I was in in Magala there two years ago now, and it was a similar 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 setup setup. So like you'd be going through the tactics, uh, you're going through the video. Um, you know all that kind of additional stuff that has to be done, um, the drills, um, I suppose just the standard of players in Galway is, is the difference. Um, you're just you're just going up that level, um, but it's in terms of drills and and all the add-ons, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Mm. And I suppose, like, obviously, looking at that, you were you were talking about it earlier, of course. So, you know, the defeat to, to Mount Bellew, my lock, like the seven point loss, obviously, last summer. Do you think, as well, with the year that was in it, would it be in 2020? Like, you only have to look at a number of things in sport that happened in 2020, like the amount of shocks and surprises. Do you think that maybe had something to do with it as well? And kind of being back after the, the long layoff and, uh, and everything else that kind of went with it? I think so, yeah. It was, I think there was a lot of surprises throughout, throughout Ireland at the time. Um, it was just kind of, I suppose, hard to get consistent training and, you know, here and there. And th- I suppose the main thing is probably the community side of it and the social side of it with the lads. Like, you know, it was it was hard to get all the lads together as a group, like, and and go through things. And it was just different. It was just 2020 is the best way to describe it. But um, I was hoping the same thing would happen the Dubs last year, but I don't think that happened. But. Joey seen down in in uh, with Cork and Tip and, and Kerry in that that situation in the county last year and yeah it was a strange year and Kevin Kevin getting through Ulster as well so there was a lot of shocks um not just not just in club but in county as well. Hmm. And I suppose as well, like looking at the the Galway Senior Football Championship, like how competitive is it in your opinion? Because obviously, I mean, a lot of people maybe from the outside would kind of look at yourselves as highly dominant. But like what we were saying earlier, like a lot of very close games and even Mount Bellew, my lock, who beat yourselves, still didn't go on to win the, the Galway Senior Football Championship. I think they were beaten by Moy Cullen. So like how competitive is it in your opinion? And, you know, how how many good teams are there in the, the Galway Senior Football Championship that might maybe even push on in, in all Ireland or a Connacht if I suppose they got past yourselves in one of those previous years? Yeah, um, I was kind of glad there wasn't additional Connacht and All-Ireland Championship this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, there's about four or five, um, definitely four or five teams that could win it on any given day, on any given year. Um, when you, Mount Bellew, were there, they've been there for years, the likes of Tune, um, and Adam pushed us close one year. Um, saw Till will be there and thereabouts. And then Mike Holland were obviously on the radar this year as well. Um, but we didn't get that fair. And they've been they've been they've been there and thereabouts for years now as well. Um but yeah, I, I suppose we've kind of set somewhat of a standard over the, over the past few years. Um I suppose it's it's it is competitive. Um We'll see how it is next year. Um, we're mad to get back at it now. We'll we'll see how we we get on, and we can push my column. They're the champions at the moment, so it's up to us to overturn that. Mm. And I suppose is that the big focus for for twenty twenty one as well? Is I suppose getting the, I suppose in some ways. I mean, I, I don't know what way you look at it, but you could probably still do the four in a row. I mean, I'm not too sure what what way they're going to go about it, but. I mean, is, is that a big focus as well as as the the Galway Senior Football Championship? I know you're probably looking at Galway first, but I suppose to kind of continue that success. I mean, I know I think Cross McGlenn maybe are the, the only team, maybe Nemo Rangers as well that have won more club titles. So is that kind of a, a focus as well? I think the way we kind of do it in Gervin is just like we take a game by game. I think it's more important than ever now to get that after a loss. Um, you're not as good as your last game, so. Yeah, we'll start off at the group stage, try to get a few wins on our belts, under our belt, get a momentum, and and just keep keep taking it game by game. Um, we'll assess um each team as they come. Um, don't know when that'll be. Hopefully, we get out a few league games. Um, maybe while the county is is going ahead or something like that. 
Um, just looking forward really to get back and playing football. Um, we'll see from there what happens. But yeah, we're definitely looking looking forward to, to getting back to where we were. I know a lot of people have, some, some people have written us off um, saying we're getting old now at this stage, but we'll see. I'm yeah. only 26, so I have a few years left of me yet. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's always a bit foolish, I suppose, when you get wrote off, I suppose, you know, especially considering you did win three in a row. Like, um, and I, I suppose as well, like looking at, obviously they, they had a separate win though for, for club and county um, last year as well. Like obviously that's something that I suppose is, I suppose been a, a little bit of a conflict between Galway and Corofin down the years because obviously, you know, Corofin have been so successful and a lot of those players probably haven't played for Galway into county team like yourself a lot of the time. So is having that separate window, do you think, kind of a step forward as well to and, and something that might actually help Galway as well? Yeah, definitely. It would be good to to have the lads in and, and get an understanding of the setup as well. I know when I was in with, with Galway, um it, it took me a while to kind of get adapted to the lads and how they play. And you know, especially as an inside forward, as I was saying before, you're kind of relying on the lads out 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 on the pitch and like in Curfin, there's a different style of play to Galway and I suppose I got about two or three months in Galway two years ago now and you wouldn't like you wouldn't get a full understanding of, of the way everyone plays um in that time uh, so if if the lads can go in for a full full season like and get an understanding of of the way the system is and, and the setup and the way lads think um, that can benefit them hugely yeah and I suppose it's that like a big focus for yourself I'd imagine as well like to try and I suppose get back in the, the Galway team over the next couple of years like obviously Podrick Joyce is in there at the minute and I suppose you were there a couple of years ago so is that kind of something you're I suppose aiming towards now in the next couple of years yeah definitely I suppose uh, the next the next way to for me to kind of get looked at again is to have a good club championship and um, that's where they'd be picking and um, I was in there before I, I got the got the chop and I was a bit disappointed um, I would have liked a, b- a bit more time just to kind of get an understanding of, of the setup and, and and get familiar with the lads and just show what I could do um, I, I don't think I got that much time but um, yeah my, the next goal for me is just kind of get fit and, and get back playing football and yeah Show, show what I can do in the club championship and looking forward to now looking forward to get back playing a bit Absolutely yeah like, and what did you make of how, how Galway got on in the, the championship season in 2020 um, obviously beaten by Mayo in the in the Connex final um, but I suppose didn't get that game against Sligo which probably might have hampered them a little bit maybe with the likes of Shane Walsh and whatnot coming back from injury so what did you make of, um, of Galway's championship season? Yeah, it was a bit disappointing. I know that they lost by a point in the end, but I remember thinking midway through the second half that whoever loses this game is going to be kicking themselves because there's a lot of wides in that game from, from Mayo and Galway's point of view. Um, I'd say they'll, they'll definitely be disappointed with that, especially with the, the year that was in it and the opportunities that came with that win. Um, Mayo went on to the All-Ireland final and you know, even Galway getting to an Ireland semi-final would have been huge because they hadn't done it in so many years. Um, but I'm sure they'll be back. They have the serious talent in there. They have the likes of Shane Walsh, Michael Daly, and these lads, young lads coming through as well from from under 20 that Park worked with before. Um, I know a few lads from from Curry Finner in there now at the moment. So they have a nice setup now, and hopefully they can drive on and and win a Connacht and and get on then and start putting pressure on All Ireland. Mm. Um, de- they definitely have the talent there compared to other other counties absolutely yeah like there's definitely a, a quite a range of talent like definitely coming through Galway at the minute and I suppose when you look at the under 20s as well like winning the All-Ireland there's definitely a, a lot of kind of up and coming players as well that might break into the panel maybe this year at some point is that kind of what you think as well with Galway maybe in the next couple of years like that and All-Ireland you know maybe they might be the team to, to stop the All-Conquering dubs or, or something to that effect I mean they've certainly got a lot of good up and coming players coming through at the minute. Yeah, hopefully. I know that's definitely the way the way Porrick is thinking. He he's only has one goal in the mind, that's Stall Ireland. Um there's a lot of young lads from Curfin now would be Dylan McHugh. He had a great year last year. Um Dara Silk is there as well. Um these lads would be in their like early twenties, twenty. Um and he he's obviously familiar from underage of the 
the under twenties lads. So I suppose he knows he's no he knows what he's dealing with and he's a huge amount of young lads in there at the moment and apparently they're flying from what I'm here, but we'll we'll see what comes. Hopefully they get a get a league campaign under their belt and we can see see how they're they're looking towards championship. Absolutely, yeah. Like and I suppose with the lockdown and everything else that's come in, obviously it's kinda of hampered a lot of the, the minor and under twenty players, I suppose, with everything being cancelled. But I suppose we'll have to kind of wait and see how things go over the next while. Well look, listen, I suppose Martin, uh, we'll wrap them things up here anyways. Uh, I appreciate your time coming on and look, listen, best of luck with the the twenty twenty one club championship season whenever it does come around and um, yeah best of luck with Galway in the future as well hopefully you get back on the team at some point cheers Aaron thanks for the invite thank you very much for watching and listening to this podcast with Martin Farger I would like to thank Martin for coming on the podcast it was a very good conversation indeed of course looking back at his time playing for Corofin and his free time playing for Galway of course as well I do hope you all enjoy do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already stay tuned for more podcasts and videos coming soon and have a lovely weekend